My name is Daniel Colmenares, one of the resident pros here at Aperture Lighting. Now, the company's been around a lot longer than people realize. We were not always making LEDs, but Aperture, as kind of how we know it, has been around 2014. Uh, really is, is when, when it reached its lighting zenith as becoming a lighting company. Uh, before that, there was other things we were trying out, uh, and I joined the company in 2021. What do you have here behind you? So right here is our big unveiling for, for the Cinegear right here. It's something we've been working on for many years. We're very excited about it. It's called the Electra Storm Series, and it's two lights. Uh, we have a the XT26, which is a 2600-watt bicolor light that actually has tint control. So we're calling that dynamic white. So it can have perfect planking and tracking across its range. You also have green magenta shift to be able to match it with other fixtures. Uh, and we're very excited about it. It's our first distro light in the United States. Uh, it requires actual you know, generators or tow engines or real power uh, uh, to operate. And next to it is his brother, uh, the 1500C, or actually that was the code name, the real name is the CS15, and CS15 stands for Color Spectrum 1500 Light. And the reason we're calling this a color spectrum is not just because it can do all the light, all the you know colors in the spectrum as an RGBWW fixture, but because we're using the chipset from our Amaran S series that we developed originally, which uses a dual blue LED to create a more even spectrum in our white uh, diodes. And what that means is we're actually able to hit an SSI score of 89 on tungsten and 86 in daylight with this light, which makes it the most powerful color LED in the market right now. That's also the most color accurate and should be able to provide the best skin tones in relation to tungsten of any LED fixture in the market. So we're very excited about it. So now you have a 2600 watt unit and then you have a 1500 watt full color. Correct. So the 2600 watt can also run off a 15 amp stinger. What happens then? Correct. So we're using a new four-pin system for our power uh, for our power cables, and so the ballast itself actually knows what cable you plug in. So if you plug in a 60 amp Bates cable, the ballast knows it's getting full power, and it's going to go full blast. But if you plug in an optional cable we're going to have available for sale that is a 15 amp Edison plug, then the light will limit itself to 15 amps of output. Now with the 2600. You know, that might be like you're wasting out a lot of output, but there could be in a situation where you have a generator out on location and you have a lightning storm floor rolling in and for safety reasons, you shut down the generator and that would leave you high and dry with your bigger fixtures. This gives you an ability to still tie into house power and because the light is IP65 rated, it could be set, you know, still out there in a crane or wherever you have it uh, and just be able to provide some kind of output for you to keep going and limp along to, to get your production done. So the key for this is versatility. We want to make sure this light that is versatile is be able to work in multiple situations. And here you're showing it, uh, the full color unit on a mover. Correct. So uh, you'll notice that both lights actually share the exact same form factor. They use the same housing and they use the same ballast housing. And that was by design. The CS15 um, actually has 4,400 watts worth of LEDs in it. Uh, that's so that we can hit, with the SC15, the levels of an M18 in daylight uh, at output and still be able to go uh, tungsten uh, and to go all the different colors that we have. You've got it on a mover, but uh, there's something else that moves. That is correct. Both lights have removable yokes, so they have quick releases, and we are releasing, at the same time as the lights, a mechanized yoke. So this is not a mover in the traditional theater sense that you want to use on location to do cues. It is a slower movie. It takes about eight seconds to do a full 360 rotation. But what we envision this as being something that you can put up on places that are hard to reach and have full control of the light without losing time or losing a crew member to babying that light up there, right? You know, that is kind of inhumane. I don't want, I've done it in the past. I never want to be on a crane having to, you know, figure out when I can drink water because there is no bathroom, right? So uh, beyond that, both lights have an electronic mount. And so that allows us to use electronic components. It's called the A mount. It's larger than a Bowens mount and it's more secure. And that allows the lights to uh, have electronic components such as the F14 Fresnel that is attached to the 15 uh, to the S CS15. And that Fresnel is also fully motorized and controllable at the ballast or via DMX or in a future update by the time the light launches via Citus Link. So you'll be able to pan and tilt and focus and spot your light at your ballast or with Citus Link or with your board operator who's going to be programmed, able to program the light and program the moves. So we're very excited. This is really We've been knocking on the door at high-level productions, and I've been hinting at this at the user groups and some other places. This is our blowing the door open, coming in and saying, here's our M40 equivalent, 
here's an M18 equivalent, here's all the toys and bells and whistles that you need to use it on a, the highest of highest level productions with the highest quality and with like the quality and the output of the light coming first. So one last thing, uh, this, uh, the s smartness of the modifiers, that also affects the intensifiers, does it not? Absolutely, so uh, you noticed that earlier that there are contacts even on the dumb modifiers, right? These reflectors are just reflectors, just like the intensifiers in a 1200D, but they have contacts. The ballast knows which modifier you've put on. We're able to see what, how the light is gonna shift in color depending on what modifier, or what materials are in front of it, glass, soft boxes, uh, you know, the metal reflectors on these, on these uh, intensifiers, and uh, have the light smartly and invisibly adjust its white balance so that it doesn't deviate from the plank in white. So that we are looking at less than 200 degrees Kelvin shift when you shift modifiers. You should not be able to worry about mixing modifiers and having lights that are slightly up and slightly down. And I know that these are minute changes, but we're aiming these lights at the highest of highest productions. And that's when you need to have reliability and that kind of color fidelity at your fingertips. This is all great, big lights and stuff like that. But um, how about the holy grail of having a spot mount adapter for these lights? Spotlight mount. Boom. So the Spotlight Max, I know that we've been teasing about this. I know you've been waiting for this with bated breath. The reason we took so long to release this is that this Spotlight Max is not just optimized for the 600 watt and 1200 watt LEDs that we release. It'll also work with the 2600 uh, watt light as well as the 1500 watt light. Those lights have a built-in Bowens mount in them and they will work with a Spotlight Max. So we're very excited about this. It uses our own proprietary lens system. We're gonna have a 19, a 36, and we listened, Luke, a 50. Uh, but on top of that, we will have an ETC adapter, so you can adapt ETC lenses. Wait, what? Mount. That's right, the adapter is right over there, we can take a look at that. <laughs> but you want to break out your 90 degree lens, you want to break out your 10 degree lens, you can do so. It won't be as efficient or as clean as ours, which are optically designed no. for our glass, but it's there for when you guys need it. Uh, you're getting a 60% output with the Spotlight Max compared to using the regular Spotlight in a 600. And then you can actually use it in a 1200 or these bigger lights, which you cannot do with our regular Spotlight attachment. One of the really cool things is the gobo holder on it. It's very beefy. I cannot pull this because this thing has been on all day and it's very hot. Yep. But it takes A and B size gobos, metal and glass. It actually pops into a full casing. Kind of looks like a, a, a very thick uh, frame. And then it has a geared rotation. So you have full 360 degree rotation perfect placement of the gobo so you don't have to no, you know no longer like other oh, spotlight mount pull it out try to figure out the rotation and bring it back down you can fully dial it in yeah full blades uh dual iris spotlight as well so you can actually you know do a full spotlight situation yep. and then as well as our, our new lenses uh it does have a removable yoke just like the the new uh electro storms and with the newer electro storms you'll be able to take that the these this yoke off just to make it look prettier Right, so, right, right. This is our Jolico 800, Jolico 1600 equivalent, and uh, we're very proud of it. Very bright and very controllable. Right now, it's on a 1200D, getting totally hot, but it's specced out to go on an even hotter unit. Absolutely. The original Spotlight was actually designed for the 120D, 120 watts, and yet that one was able to withstand heats all the way up to the uh, 600 watts. It actually can technically work on a 1200. The problem with the 1200 is that the optics uh, of the mount would, were actually reflecting the internals of the 1200D. And because the, uh, the internal lens was so small, optimized for 120 watt sensor, it was just wasting output. So you really weren't gaining any output if you stuck a 1200D on the original Spotlight. You couldn't use it for gobos, you didn't want to use it for reflectors. So it's not a compatible product in our opinion, right? Sure. With this guy, has been designed with this in mind. And again, the reason we delayed this release is we didn't want to just come up with an accessory that is then going to be replaced by the very next light we're going to release. We're thinking, and we take back the feedback you guys give us, this is something we've developed so that we could go all the way up to the newer products that we're bringing. And so it's going to give you maximum value. How does this work with a full color unit? Absolutely perfectly. In fact, behind us, you have the 600C, and the 1500C would be a fantastic product to make with this guy. It gives you full color control with the Gobos, very sharp uh, outfit. And, and yeah, I invite you guys to test uh, the ETC lenses as well, the adapters for the ETC lenses. Thank you. Fantastic.
Uh, shout out to Andrew because you better come next year. Right. Oh yeah, he's not here, right? No, he no, didn't make it out. No, no. He's too busy working. Yeah. Big time this. I guess Australia's not on strike, so he, <laughs> he, he can, can work. work your booth. Huh? He can work your booth. I know. He's gonna he's gonna miss out. Now all his all his shipments are gonna get lost. And he'd be like Roger Deakins walking around here. I mean, did you see, did you see Roger yeah. walking around? It yeah. was it I was mean, crazy. Sir Roger. Sir Roger. Yeah. Sir Deakins. You don't know him like that. Use his That's last right. name, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, Sir Deacons. Sir Deacons. Sir yeah. Deacons was, was here and people were pretty crazy.